to never forget anything, not a single moment of your life. It may sound like a blessing, a way to cherish every last precious moment of your fleeting life. However, negation abilities aren't gifts, they aren't blessings. They are cruel jokes played on innocent humans by an unfeeling and sadistic god. Nico is the vessel of the Uma Forget, negates the rule of forgetting. He is the negator, unforgettable. His tragedy, like so many of the cast, is one that not only brought about his ability, but great pain and sorrow. A pain so great it caused him to almost defile the memories of the one he'd held most dear. Besides our two MCs, Fuku and Andy, Nico is my favourite character in the series. And so to kick off a series of Undead Unluck character analysis videos on this channel, today we will discuss Nico Vorgil, aka Unforgettable. So if you find yourself entertained at any point during the video, then consider liking, subscribing and ringing that bell. Anyway, on with the video. Nico, before he was a negator, was an engineer, and even with his negation ability, he is a scientist first and negator second. He desires to learn everything there is to learn. Now his name, Nico Vorgil, I, I can't say his surname guys, just, just deal with it, could have a few meanings. Nico, usually short for Nicholas, means victory of the people. Quite fitting for Nico, who despite first impressions, is an incredibly caring person doing much of what he does to help others. It may also be a reference to one of the greatest scientists to ever live, Nikola Tesla. As we know in story, Nico looked up to Tesla as a great scientist. His surname fitting with most undead unluck characters is a pun to do with his negation ability. Vorgil being pronounced, you know, similarly to forget. Though there's also the funny theory from before his ability was revealed that he was going to be the negator unsex since Giel is German for horny. And at the time we didn't know like Mika and the lab members were like his friends and daughter and they could have just been like weird clones of his. But that theory aged like milk. Still, it is pretty funny. His appearance though tells us a lot more about his character than his name. Nico's appearance is, to be honest, pretty creepy with what looks like two separate emblems embedded into his flesh, holes in his forehead and no eyebrows. To go a bit further, you could call it a little inhuman, as Nico, in pursuit of defeating God, has stepped out of the realms of humanity, best shown of him weaponizing souls in the Ragnarok arc. The fact he never touches the ground, always on his psychopods, may also tie into this. He has left the world behind in the endless pursuit of knowledge. Oh, and also both his love of coffee and the bags under his eyes are traits he developed from his wife, showing just how much her existence shaped him as a person. But okay, enough of all that name design crap, let's get into his backstory. In the 100th loop, we first see Nico working for the Union, using science to conquer God's rules and bend them to humanity's will. As he says, he wants to learn everything there is to learn because that to him is science. But Ichiko counters his beliefs and instead says that science is learning things you don't know. The difference between these two approaches being that Nico has lost sight of the true beauty of science. What's fun, what's meaningful to science, is learning something new. It's not a checklist, it's an endless sea of new possibilities. Nico, though, through his quest to slay God, has lost sight of this vision of science he once held. Over their time working together, Nico began to fall in love with Ichiko, and more importantly, his use of science changed as well. When we first saw him in the flashback, he was yelling about how he'd beaten a rule, how science is a war on God. Yet after seeing the bags under Ichiko's eyes, he instead uses science not to fight against God, but instead to help a friend. Science isn't a war, it's not a weapon. As she says, science is lovely. Chasing new rules and endless new ideas is not the point. The point of science is to take those things you discover, understand them and utilize them to help those you care for, to help your friends. Nico's tech, his science, is the backbone of the Union. I mean, in the Ragnarok arc, when he betrays the Union, he almost cripples the organization. That's how important he is, because taking on the lessons taught to him by Chico led him to support his friends. However, as we know, tragedy struck, and Nico lost Chico, now his wife, in childbirth. He'd gained a gift in Miko, but he had lost the one he cared for most. He'd long wished to understand everything, and so God granted him the ability to never forget a single detail. But of course, like the cruel god they are, Sun did it the moment his wife died. The first thing Nico saw with his now unforgetting mind was the face of his wife as she died on her deathbed. As Nico describes, as time goes on, he loses those memories he had before unforgettable and so he slowly lost each and every memory of his wife's face, all but one, but the moment his memories became everlasting. From that moment on, for the rest of his life, that moment, every single detail of it, would forever be on Nico's mind. It's honestly commendable he remained as good-natured and kind as he did, given such tragedy was permanently stained into his mind. However, there was a tipping point for Nico. 
there were two things that could sway his heart, his quest to slay God and his wife. And when Uma Ghost gave him the opportunity to see his wife one more time, he of course took it. The chance to see her again, even if just for a moment, was enough to knock Nico past the point of no return. And I think what this really speaks to is Nico's desire for connection. His wife was his rock, the one person who was on his wavelength who loved science as much as him. He of course got on with others too, but she was different. And then the moment she died, he gained unforgettable. And with this came not just the isolation of being a widower, a new isolation he never had before. Due to unforgettable, he could never forget anything. And because of that, he came to understand that nobody ever remembered anything. No, all they did was recall a vague recollection of the past. They pruned their memories, only kept the stuff that was convenient to them and threw the rest aside. He though, he never forgot a single detail of those he cared for. He actually remembered them. He didn't throw aside any information about them because he thought it was useless. It's not the same, not to Nico. And so Nico became alone in a way only he could understand. Given all that, it's understandable why he made the deal with Ghost. He was left alone, isolated from his friends, teammates, and even daughter. And the one person he felt truly close to, her memories were on the brink of vanishing from his mind as it was crushed by never ending information. If he lost the memories of her, then what would be the point? She was all that kept him sane from being alone, so he staked everything on seeing her in some hope that she could save him from his tragedy, from being alone, for never forgetting a single moment as his comrades died around him. As Andy fought Nico as he destroyed the lab he and Ichigo had worked in, he felt pained, because those inventions, that room, held so many precious memories. They were what kept him from forgetting her, but by trying to bring her back, he was destroying these memories. As he recalled these memories, he was able to see his wife again. Even after they worked out bringing back the dead was impossible without a way to interact with the soul, Nico still persevered, and the reason was because he knew she didn't have long. Her body due to unsleep couldn't ever rest properly. It only had so long. But even so, she told Nico he wouldn't be alone because she'd leave him with their child. She left him Nico, someone to love in her place, but Nico was too scared. And so instead of opening his heart to his daughter, he instead closed it to anyone but Ichiko. He was too afraid. He ran away. Instead of changing and letting himself forget Ichiko for the sake of the daughter she left in her place, he isolated himself and let himself be chained by the past, by the memories that his negation ability shackled him with. Like I've been saying, what Nico feared the most was being alone. As Andy destroyed those memories before Nico's eyes, he begged for Ghost to bring her back so he could make memories of her that he would never forget. Even if everything he held dear, everything that held meaning to him was destroyed, as long as he saw her again, it would not matter, because then he'd have an unforgettable memory of her. Not one that could be crushed by new information, nor destroyed by Andy's attacks. But as said before, he was on a tipping point, and Andy's actions knocked him over the brink. Ghost took over, using Nico as a host. But Nico at heart is a scientist, and he can't deal with an Uma that doesn't follow its own rules. He rips his way back out and gives Fuko back to Andy. He tells him to go and see her again. Nico, after all, understands Andy's pain for not being able to see the one you love most. And so because deep down he is still a guy who wants to use science to save others, to save the living, he gives up his chance to see Ichiko again and allows Andy to be the one to see his lost lover instead. But although this brings hope to our protagonist, it does nothing for Nico. He may have avoided doing something he would have regretted, but that didn't erase the loneliness, didn't fix anything. Miko, as she desperately tried to revive Fuko's body, could only sob as behind her, her father slowly died. She apologised for not being able to fill the void in her heart. She blamed herself for not making him whole again. But of course it wasn't her fault, and Nico makes sure to tell her that. It was all his own fault, his fear. His fear prevented him from truly loving Miko because he was too scared if he did, he'd be giving up on ever remembering Ichiko's face again. However, as he died, as he passed on, with the effects of ghosts still in place, he was able to see her one more time. Ichiko and the lab members he killed in his selfish pursuit appeared to him. Nico's life spiralled after he became a negator. He lost the love of his life and because of it became unable to truly love anyone else, even his daughter. He was alone in a way only he could understand, and so in desperation betrayed the allies he once held so dear, just to try for one moment to feel happy to see his love again. However, as bad as it may have ended for Nico in this loop, it wouldn't happen again. Andy resolved to not let it happen again, and so in the next loop, he and Fuko, undead and unluck, would save him. With him going from looking like this, 
to looking like this. And honestly, although Nico is now Fuko's right hand man and has been present for pretty much every event post looping, not much character stuff has happened with him. We of course get a much better view of his pre-unforgettable self, a deeply caring person, one who will happily sacrifice himself for the sake of others, best shown with the whole disc fiasco. The Phil arc also highlights his views of science. He is angered at the fact a child was used as a test subject and wanted to save Phil more than any other. He gave up his personal desire as a scientist to go to space because he wanted the mission to have the best shot at saving Phil. This not only shows how much he respects science and hates the idea of the thing he loves most being used to hurt others, but also how much compassion he has in his heart for others. As he says, science should be for protecting lives, not toying with them which funny enough shows an evolution of his previous loop's mindset, as what he just described is exactly what Sun does. Science should not be the same as God, it should be a way to help others and make their lives better. He will use science to help people, also highlighted by his aversion to the idea of memory wiping technology. As to this Nico, science is not a weapon. The Nico we currently have in the story is one who feels like part of a team, one who cares for his friends above all else. However, given he is the only current member of the Union squad to yet gain his ability, and the large story focus being given at the moment to prominent characters such as Gina or Void, I'm pretty sure the manifestation of his ability will not be in some throwaway scene, but will be an incredibly important scene both for the plot and his character, and will give this new looped version of Nico the proper depth that his character honestly deserves. I mean, it's not like the Master Rule which he defeated Solo in Loop 100 is, you know, currently on their way down to Earth or anything. So yeah, I think it's quite likely Nico's ability will manifest fairly soon and will be the key to defeating Language. And since there's no way Ichiko is dying again, and we of course are going to see Miko again, even if it's only in the epilogue of the story, it's pretty obvious that Nico's tragedy is not going to be repeated. Even with Unforgettable, this current Nico will not be alone. He will instead redefine what his ability means. Not one that makes him alone, but instead makes both him and the Union unforgettable for being the ones to save humanity and defeat God. And if you want to support this channel even further, then perhaps pledge to my Patreon or consider becoming a channel member so you can get your name at the end of the video like Hikari Desu, Rinjak9696, Mr. Sputum, and Matthias Rowett. So with all that said and done, I have been Seth the Sin, the Deadly Sin of Geek, and I am signing out. Stay safe, everyone.